Here is a graph of the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x plus 0 0.5. We saw in a previous video that we can get the area between the curve and the x-axis by taking the definite integral of the function. For example, to get this area shown here in red, we have to get the definite integral of f of x dx from minus 1.3 to minus 0.3. And you can see that to two decimal places, the answer is 2.19. So let's just see that calculation. We have to get the integral of this function here, which is straightforward. We just add one to the power here to get x to the four, and then we divide by that new power. We do the same here, the power is one. We add one to one to get two and divide by the new power to get minus three halves x squared. And when we integrate a constant with respect to x, we get that constant times x. So we get 0.5x. Then we apply our limits as we saw in the previous video. So we saw that we have to plug the upper limit minus 0.3 in for x in all of this expression. So this is what we get. And then we put down a minus sign. And in brackets, we write out all of this expression with the lower limit minus 1.3 in for x. Okay, so remember, we have to minus this quantity here. So that's why we need brackets. So all of this quantity here is just the integral of the function with x replaced by the upper limit minus 0.3. And in here, we have the integral of the function with x replaced by the lower limit minus 1.3. We get a constant of integration, but as we saw previously, um, because we're subtracting, that constant disappears. Anyway, if you calculate all of this to two decimal places, you should get 2.19. Now notice that the answer came out to be positive. Now it's possible to get a negative value for a. If we move the limits of integration over here. Okay, so let's make um, say a, or sorry, the lower limit 0 0.5 and the upper limit 1.3. Notice that the area is minus 1.06. That's because this region here is entirely below the x-axis. Now we saw in a previous video that if we're getting the area between a curve and the x-axis, we imagine dividing it up into infinitely many thin rectangles. Each rectangle has width dx. Well, we said the width, well, width was delta x, and then in the limit as delta x goes to zero, it becomes dx, so that's the dx in the notation for the definite integral. Now, what about the length or height of this rectangle? Well, if this point here is x, some x value between the limits of integration between here and here, we could call this one a and this one b, then the height of this rectangle is the value of the function at x. But the value of the function at x in this case is going to be negative. So, we know to get the area of a rectangle, we multiply the, the height, f of x, by the width, dx. It's just that this will come out to be negative, because as you can see, the graph is below the x-axis for, for values of x between a and b. Um, so f of x will be negative. Okay, so that's just one rectangle. So this will be a negative quantity. But of course, to get the area between the curve and the x-axis from a to b, we have to get a definite integral from a to b of our function f of x dx. And that's going to be negative. Now, usually when we're talking about the area, we want it to be positive. You know, so if you have to get this area here, well, really, you could just get the magnitude of this quantity, shown by vertical lines. Just make it positive. So, you know, in this case, the value of the definite integral is minus 1.06. But if we are just getting the area of this region, you would say the area is plus 1.06. You just make this quantity positive. Notice here that the area between the curve and the x-axis from minus 1 to minus 0.3 is plus 1.47. Now, Let's increase the upper limit. Now notice what's happening to the area. Well, it's decreasing, A is decreasing. 
Now this A is not the actual red area. Um, it would actually be greater than 0.47. What's happening here is that this quantity is positive, but this red region here is negative, so they tend to cancel each other out. So that's why we're getting a small value here for A. Um, they don't actually cancel out to zero, but when we're getting the area in this case, we'd have first of all have to integrate from minus one to this point here, whatever it is, and then integrate from this point to plus point nine. Um, let's get the coordinates of this point here. So this point is a point on the x-axis. So that means its y-coordinate is zero. And it's also a point on the curve, so it's got to satisfy the function. So if we plug x in for this, well, we get x cubed minus 3x plus 0 0.5. And whatever this value of x is, the x value of this point is, th this must give us 0. So basically, we have to solve this cubic equation. Now, that is something that we covered in algebra. And uh, actually, we only dealt with cubic equations that we could fairly easily solve. This one might not be so easy to solve. So I won't go through the solution of this. Just to say that in general, you may need to find where the graph of the function cuts the x-axis by just setting the function equal to zero. Usually it'll be a simpler function than this particular one here. But basically that's what we have to do. We have to solve f of x equals zero frequently when we're getting areas between functions and the x-axis. Um, that's because we need to actually consider two separate regions here rather than just one region. You know, if we take one region from minus 1 to 0.9, well, this bit will come out to be positive, and this bit here will come out to be negative, so these will tend to cancel each other out. So this is not the area. Okay, the area will be some number that's greater than 1.15. So we will normally need to get this point, then integrate from minus 1 to this point here. Note the answer to be positive. Then we integrate from this value to this value here. We'll get a negative value. We make that negative value positive, and we just add it onto this if we're looking for the actual area. Now I'm going to use GeoGebra to get the coordinates of this point here. You can see that two decimal places, the x value of this point is 0 0.17. So here is the integral of f of x dx from minus 1 to 0 0.17. You see that we get a positive answer. Now I won't go through evaluating this, it's a straightforward integral to do. Next if we integrate from 0.17 to 0 0.9, we get minus 0 0.64, because this comes out negative since we're summing rectangles with uh, negative values for f of x. So f of x is, is negative for all values of x in this region here. The graph is below the x-axis. So we're summing all those rectangles. Some of them are negative. And of course, they will tend to cancel out the positive ones. So to get the integral from minus 1 to plus 0.9 of f of x dx, we can just put these together. So if we put these numbers together, we get 1.15. Now, since we're after the total area in, enclosed between the graph and the x-axis, we want to treat this as a positive quantity. So the total area will be 1.79 plus 0 0.64. So we just make this quantity here positive. We make this integral positive. So we get 2.43. So this is something that we will be doing quite a bit 